you can see, just like we had a look at uh, a product rule yesterday, we're going to look at the quotient rule today, and we're going to actually, unlike, I'm just going to hand it to you, we are going to prove this result. So I need to get you back into the right context. Let's think about this first. If you are differentiating the sum of two functions, what happens? What do you do with each of those two functions? You can... Separate. Yeah, you can just do them separately, can't you? You can just say, well, I'll work out the first derivative, u dash, and then I'll work out the second derivative, v dash, and the sum of, sorry, the derivative of a sum is the sum of those two derivatives. And that's nice and neat. So this is what we call, well, the sum of function. There's nothing too complicated about it, so it doesn't get much of a special name. But then we said, what if those two functions, instead of adding them together, what if you had a function with another function inside it? So for example, instead of u of x plus v of x, what if you had u on the outside, and then what you put into there was a different function? Like so, okay? Now, this is what we call the chain rule. This is a bit different. So I'll just give you a quick, you know, actual concrete example, right? If I said 3x plus 1 to the power of 7, right? So you can see there, you've got this function inside, 3x plus 1. There's your function inside there. And then you're applying another function to that, in this case, raising it to the power of 7, right? What did we do? What was our rule? Do you remember I showed you a picture? What was the picture? Uh, no, we'll come to that in a second. Think about this. This was the babushka dolls. Do you remember? It's, it's all nested inside. That's why I've written it in this way. So what we do is we just go from the outside and we differentiate every layer in. Okay, now think about how would we write this, okay? Here's the outside function, the one on the, on the most exterior part. What would I write? Was it, was it dy over du? Uh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Ah, uh, very good. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to come to that in a second. This, okay. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll do that way that, you've, um, that you're suggesting. I'll do it first because that is the old way that we read it. So you said dy on du. Yep. And then you multiply that by, we chained it along with another derivative. Du, du on dx. And that's why you saw those du's cancel, okay? But underneath this, I want to show you how to write it in function notation. So this is what I started to write, and let's actually do it properly. So if what the thing was that I was differentiating was, a function on the outside, and then another function on the inside of that. Let's think about how we would write this, but using this notation, okay? The outside function, that's this first thing here, right? It's going to be differentiating this guy, right? That's u dash. So in this case, what would that be? What would be the derivative of the outside function? S ooh, hold on. Seven. That's the outside function there, right? So if I'm differentiating this, Seven. The 7 comes out the front, uh, right? Plus right? You still have this 3x plus 1, and then what happens to that power? Very good, it drops down. So just before we blew on, bless you, what you've done is, you've done u dash, but then see the inside is not x, it's whatever the original inside function was, it's still there, right? So here I'm going to write that inside function. Here it is, v of x, in there, okay? But I'm not finished, am I? That's just, I open up the babushka doll and I'm like, oh wait, there's another function inside. So what would you do? What's the next step? Times um, three. Yeah, three, very good. That's the inside derivative there, three x plus one. That gives you the derivative. So how would I write this in function notation? What's the name of the inside function Times for this? X. The derivative of x. That, that's the inside function there. So what would I call the derivative of that? I call it v dash, right? v dash. There you go. So these two things are saying the same thing, but we're using, this is Leibniz's notation. Do you remember that? It's one of the reasons why we introduced it. And this is using the dash notation that we started with at the beginning of calculus. All right. Zanko is ahead of us. One more thing. Instead of the addition of functions, the other thing we looked at was when you multiply functions together. So if I am differentiating one function, let's call it u, multiplied by another function. Let's call it v. This is what we call the, the vuv, right? After what the letters were in order. So if I just spell that out, the first thing is v multiplied by u dash. There's a derivative there, that's important. Plus 
the, the other function again, and then v dash. v dash. Very good. So we didn't prove this result. It is a bit of a um, it's a bit of a tangle to prove it. However, we're going to use it now to think about well, what happens if we don't add functions, if we don't multiply functions, what happens if we divide functions. Okay. So underneath this, we're going to get this result. What happens when the thing you're differentiating is not u plus v, it's not u times v, it's u divided by v. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. <laughs> We've said this dozens of times throughout this course. You guys know how we often advance mathematically by taking a new problem and stating it like it were an old problem. And this is the way, way, reason why I sort of wanted to review this with you, not just because it's fresh, but also because we can get a result for this, we will get a result for this, on the basis of what's written above on the board, right? This is a question, right? So it's like something divided by something else. I don't have a rule for questions yet, but every question, like three-fifths, can be written as a product. I just have to choose the right numbers. What numbers could I multiply together that would give me the same as three over five? What numbers could I multiply together? I want to multiply things. I want something times something else. Hmm. One over five times three over five. One over five times three over one times three over one. I'm just going to write that as three. Okay. Now you might think, well, that's a bit trivial, isn't it? Like, of course, those two are the same thing. But importantly, I have changed a quotient into a product. I know how to deal with products. So let's have a go at this, right? I'm going to say, consider y being this over this. Okay. So I'm writing it as it starts, as a question, but now I want to rewrite that as a product because I can deal with products, right? So I'm going to write that as u over x, and I'm multiplying that by 1 over v of x. 1 over v of x. Now hopefully the astute among you will have said, but wait a second, that's also a question. Like 1 over 5 is also a question. Can I write that in another way? 1 over 5, so it doesn't look like a question. I just want to dress up the same thing, different way. Yeah, very good. I could write this as 3 times 5 to the minus 1. And I can do the same thing over here. So I'm going to write this in a big set of brackets here. V of x to the negative 1. Okay, now why is this any better than what I had before? Well, you know how I said, ah, oh, I've got a product here? Got a product here? Well, have a look at just this guy here. Forget about the rest of the question, just focus your eyes on this. Do I have a rule? Have I developed a rule that can help me differentiate something like this? Is this, is this here? Is it a product? By itself, it's not being multiplied by anything. I don't see any times in there. But just have a look. Like I gave you, what did we have a look at? 3x plus 1 to the power of 7, right? And then you gave me what rule for this? The chain rule, right? All right, well, let's just change this number here, this 7. What if it were, for instance, negative 1? Put our buddy negative 1 out of Yeah, you would do exactly what you did before, just with negative 1 instead of 7, and then off you go. So in other words, you can use the chain rule on this. We can use the chain rule on this. Does this make sense? Okay, so I'm going to, this is tricky, because I'm going to try to do both the product rule and the chain rule at the same time. Let's have a go. For starters. The first thing I need is v. That's the first thing that's written in the product rule. So here is that second thing over there. So I'm just going to write that as it is. So let's write it. Uh, let's see here. v of x take, uh, to the power of negative 1. What's the next thing that comes along? Uh, u dash. Yeah, u dash. Now, <laughs> my u is just called u. So I'm just going to write u dash. There you go. That's the first half of the product rule. So far, so good. Plus, what's the next thing along? Just look carefully. I've already done u dash. So the next one along, I'm up to here now. It's just u, right? So I'm just going to write that, u. Now here comes the tricky part. We have to think carefully this part, right? The last bit in the product rule is v dash. So see this thing I've highlighted in red? I need to differentiate that whole thing, including the minus 1. Can we use the chain rule here? Okay, let's think. I'm going to do the outside first, right? What happens to that negative 1? Just comes out the front, so I'm going to write that, negative 1. Then what happens to the negative 1? It doesn't stay like that, does it? It's going to drop down by 1, drop down by 1. So let's see. 
I'm going to write that as v of x, not to the power of negative 1, but to the power of negative 2. Very good. And that's just the outside. Now I have to handle the inside. What is the inside function here? It's v. There it is, right there. So what's the derivative? What would I call the derivative of this guy? Yeah. Just call it v dash. Okay, now no, this looks like a bit of a garbled mess, but we've done all the hard work, now we just need to tidy this up algebraically. Um, why did I introduce the negative indices? I, I don't have it on the very first line, why did I do that? Because it's not a fraction anymore. Uh, so to make it not a fraction, because then I can differentiate it, which I have now successfully done. So now that I've done my differentiation, I don't need these as negative indices anymore, so I'm going to get rid of all of the negative indices I can see. How would you rewrite this? Uh, one over v of Yeah, it's one over v of x. Is that okay? That, then there's a u dash. Then there is, okay, let's have a look here. Whoops, I'm not going to write a plus, because that sign has changed. What's in the middle now? It's a minus because of that negative one. Minus. Okay, let's see here. Now I've got, on the numerator, let me highlight this with some color. On the numerator of my fraction, I've got a u and a v dash. Do you see that? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to write those. u and then v dash. What does my denominator become? I want to get rid of this negative index that I can see. v of x, 1 over... Yeah, it's, it's 1 over this squared. squared, right? So in fact, I'm going to write that as v... Yeah, v of x. Sorry, that should be a square bracket. Squared, is that okay? All right, I can do a little bit of tidying up here. You know how in my product rule, right, just to make it a bit easier to write, I didn't write of x, of x, of x, of x, right? It's still there, kind of in the background, but I just wrote it without that to make it easier. I'm going to do the same thing here. I've got u dash on v. Is that all right? Yeah. That's just me tidying up that first one. Over here, I've got u v dash on, I'm just going to call that v squared. So I've got two fractions. What do you normally do when you see two fractions? What are you searching for when you want them to operate common together? Denominator. Common denominator. What might you suggest would be a helpful common denominator in this case? Right. Just, yeah, just multiply this guy by v and we'll have a v squared here, v squared there. Let's do it. What do we get on the uh, left hand side here? I could write it as u dash v. I could do that. But you know what? I think I'm going to write it as the phi first, even though it's not alphabetical, and then the u dash. v, u dash, that'll be divided by v squared. I should write that. And then I've got this guy here. Can we put this together in one fraction now? Mm -hmm. What will the numerator be? The numerator? I'm just going to, I've got the same denominator, don't I? So I can just put these two things together. v, u dash at the front. Minus u v dash. Does that look familiar? Yes, sure does. And then we divide everything, of course, by v squared. Okay. So this is why yesterday I said you could call this an uvu if you want, because in addition you can change the order. But the reason I left it as a v u dash out of alphabetic order is so that you would have less to remember. The product rule and the quotient rule are so very similar, which shouldn't surprise us, because we use the product rule to get to the quotient rule. But this guy is different. It is a little more complicated. Um, this, oh that was really naughty of me, sorry. This is the derivative that we've just calculated. Okay, so what I end up with here is, you want to put this back in your original line where you've got all your rules all together. v u dash minus u v dash all over v squared. That, my friends, is the quotient rule. Okay. So it's kind of nice that uh, at least there's not too much um, in your memory that's different. Um, it's a little bit like the relationship between the cosine rule and Pythagoras. It's like, oh, these are built off of the same stuff. 